Good morning, it's Lisa with Lisa Heal Yourself and today we are going to just pass some time with some calming household homemaking activities that busy your mind, busy your hands without overacting your nervous system, staying calm, staying grounded, having something to focus on that isn't symptoms and also in the process you're doing a great thing because these are natural cleaners, they're good for your house, they're good for the environment, and it's really helpful to clean with these on a daily basis. Some of the supplies I like to use are microfiber cloths and dish cloths. I like to use vinegar, hydrogen peroxide, dish soap, essential oils, baking soda, borax, and glass cleaning bottles. We're going to start with the basic glass cleaner. It's just a vinegar and water combination. It's perfect for glass, it's perfect for windows, it's perfect for countertops that you want to be shiny, anything with a streak-free appearance. So to begin, we are going to use water to fill half the bottle. making sure to work carefully, slowly, and making sure you're breathing fully and deeply. We're gonna go ahead and fill up all the bottles while we're here at the sink. Using a funnel is easy. So the first one we're gonna make is the glass window and mirror cleaner. So, of course, we have our half water. So you can either use vinegar for the other half, or you can use rubbing alcohol for the other half, or you can use hydrogen peroxide for the other half. But you shouldn't mix, unfortunately, vinegar and hydrogen peroxide because it makes a toxic gas. So unfortunately, I would love to mix those together, but you want to keep them separate. So I prefer vinegar, so I'm gonna go ahead and use vinegar, even though it gives that smell, and I'm going to use some essential oils to mask the smell. So I like lemon or eucalyptus or a very fresh smelling um, essential oil for glass, and I don't use that much because I don't want any oil to streak the glass. So you can also use rubbing alcohol, but I find that gives a toxic fume. So it, although it's great on glass, um, I'm not gonna be using any rubbing alcohol. So just water, vinegar, and a few drops, three drops of an essential oil, just to mask the vinegar smell. That's all you need. Being sure to release any tension in your body, making sure you're breathing deeply. You take breaks to just shake out your arms and shoulders so that they're free of any tension. Filling the bottles with vinegar almost to the very top. Grounding as you go, looking out the window, taking some deep cleansing breaths and smiling. Speaking kindly and positively to yourself. Knowing that you're doing something great for yourself, your family, and your home. Smelling the wonderful essential oil of lemon. Smelling so fresh and vibrant. Feeling the sun coming through the window onto your skin. I like to use these Molly streak-free window cleaning cloths. They do a great job for glass and mirrors and windows. So we'll just do a little test of our vinegar and water spray, our glass cleaner, here on the shower glass, as well as on the windows. They do a marvelous job and it looks nice and clean with no streaks. Now we're gonna make an all-purpose kitchen and bathroom cleaner. I use scotch tape 
to go over top of the labels because I find that when you're working with water and filling these things, they often get all messy, um, they soak through, and this just prevents that. It also prevents you from smearing the chalk on your label. So just adding the tape across it really helps to keep it nice. So we have our water, our half water. We're going to use, again, vinegar in this and dish soap and essential oil. So we add dish soap to this and you can add either your normal dish soap that you use, which I like this one, or you can add a pure cast style soap. So either is fine. I'm going to add a little bit of the dish soap. You can add anywhere from one to two tablespoons, but not too much if you're using it on shiny surfaces or it will leave streaks. So depending on what areas you are cleaning, you may use one or two. All right, and then we're gonna add in our essential oils. I still love lemon. A nice a lemon scent for the kitchen is fabulous, but I also like adding pine because that pine um, fresh scent just reminds me of nature, it reminds me of the outdoors. I love it. So I use a combination of pine and lemon. For the lemon, I'm going to add about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 drops, a dozen drops. And for the pine, one, two, three, four, about four, four to five. You can add as much or as little as you like, and you can liven it up with different scents, all kinds of different wonderful scents. Of course, you can use any essential oils you want. Orange is a really nice, but if you, you have to be careful of the orange that you get. Sometimes tangerine has like an orange actual hue to it on the oil. You wanna be careful of that. So just clear hues for the essential oils. As you're adding your essential oils, be sure to stop and smell them. Slow everything down, almost as if you're working in slow motion, really letting out the tension in your shoulders, taking a nice inhale, holding, and a slow, long exhale. And then we're gonna to top the rest of this up with a vinegar. If you're using a concentrated vinegar, then you're just gonna use according to the label and add the rest with water. I'll go ahead and use this one now. Don't forget to use your funnel. Remembering to take breaks in between the various tasks as you go. There is no rush to this. This could be an all day job, a morning job, however you feel. Just enjoying and really being present with each task that you do along the way. Remembering to ground your feet into the earth, to notice the feel of the glass bottles in your hands, to notice the textures and the colors, stopping to breathe, unwind your shoulders, Say something loving, kind, and positive to yourself along the way. Shaking all the bottles gently, just to stir it up so that they're ready for use. Using my Swedish dish cloth and my Mary's J glass cleaner cloth, they're really great to use around the house. You can use the all-purpose cleaner spray with the dish soap or the shiny uh, window countertop spray when you're doing things. You can use the one with soap if something needs to get cleaned a little more and using um, the glass cleaner if something just needs to get shiny. So depending on what and how it needs to be cleaned that day, you have the choice. And lastly, for the toilet cleaner, this is for toilets, showers, tile, anything you need um, to use a little bit something heftier to clean, um, this is how we're gonna make it. For this one, we're gonna put our vinegar away and we're 
we're gonna bring out hydrogen peroxide. Remember, you can't mix vinegar and hydrogen peroxide, unfortunately, together. So we are going to use the hydrogen peroxide here. So getting ready my bottles, dish soap, baking soda, hydrogen peroxide, and essential oil. I have a concentrated 12% hydrogen peroxide. The standard would be 3% that you want to use. So I am going to go ahead and dilute mine um, three parts to one, three parts water to one part hydrogen peroxide to make a 3% solution. And I have a two cups here. I have four bottles. So I'm just going to put a quarter cup of the hydrogen peroxide in each of the bottles. And that's how I measured mine out. So I'm going to go ahead and put one scoop of baking soda, not even a scoop, maybe a half a scoop to three quarters, depending on how big your scoop is. You don't want to clog the bottle with too much baking soda, just enough to brighten. Remembering this isn't a race, to go as slow as you need to and be here, right here in the present moment fully engaged in what you're doing. Remembering to breathe, take deep inhales and long exhales. Feel your feet rounded to the floor. Sitting down, if it feels too strenuous to keep standing all the time, whatever feels right to you. I'm going to split this two cup of hydrogen peroxide four ways and put a quarter cup in each bottle. So remember you want a 3% solution, whether you start with it or you make your own. Filling the bottles untensing our shoulders. Really letting out tension from our stomach or anywhere that we might be holding an excess of tension. Remembering to love ourselves and say kind things to ourselves. Look around the room, out the window. Now I'm gonna add some dish soap. So just a little bit to each one maybe about a tablespoon, a teaspoon to a tablespoon. You don't want too much, otherwise it'll leave a film all over everything, just enough to get it clean. And then we're gonna add our thieves oil in. You can use any essential oils, but I find this thieves smell. It's really great and it gives it an extra antiseptic smell and disinfectant power. So just adding the drops to the bottle. I'm going to use about six drops. You can use 10 drops, whatever you like. Adding any extra water to fill it. Now remember, leave about an inch or two. Don't fill these all the way to the top because the pressure of the hydrogen peroxide with the baking soda could have it spill over. I just swirl them gently using the bathroom tile cleaner in the bathrooms, on the tile, on grout, on ceramic. I also use it for a little extra cleaning and sanitation on the toilet seats and the rims around the seats. Inside the toilet, I like to use a scoop of baking soda I add vinegar right in. It makes the most beautiful fuzzy sound and it does a beautiful job. No need for toxic toilet cleaners. You can scrub everything up just like this. Instead of vinegar, if you wanted to use a little bit of hydrogen peroxide, if you have a really dirty toilet bowl or a deep clean disinfectant, you can do that too. But remember, we're not mixing vinegar and hydrogen peroxide together. Go ahead and spray the toilet seats and around the rims with our cleaner. We have a nice sparkly toilet. 
super easy and non-toxic. Closing the valve when we're not using it because this one can spray out. Remember, this is if anything has a stain, a white countertop to get grout clean, tiles, toilets, and showers. But please remember, hydrogen peroxide does lighten the skin. So wear gloves if you're going to be using a lot of it and close the lid when you're done. Okay, I like to go ahead and get like just a little plastic bin or a caddy. I put a roll of paper towel, the bathroom cleaner, the all-purpose cleaner, and the glass and window cleaner. And I like to put this in every bathroom of my home under the sink. It's easy to move around, but it's handy when you're in the room. And with the rest of my all-purpose sprays, after I make sure I have one of everything in um, all the rooms, I put an extra one in the kitchen, since the laundry room, and areas that I use the most often. One other thing I like to do in the kitchen by my sink is I have my scrubbers uh, in a little flower pot, actually. And then I have like a little dish that I keep a scouring scrubber and my daily uh, washcloth. These are the Swedish washcloths. I have a pile of them and I wash them every week. But in between that, this is what I do. I take this little dish, I set it, I fold it into a square and I put it in. I use this every day. And how I keep it clean, every night I just put a little bit of baking soda in the bottom a little bit of vinegar, and some water. Just to keep my cloths clean, and I place them in here to soak while I'm not cleaning and overnight. The dishcloth doesn't smell, doesn't stink, doesn't start to get disgusting, and it's ready for use any time I need it. I just squeeze it out, and I'm ready to wipe the counters with my all-purpose spray, my all-purpose kitchen spray. Set it back in there, and that can be dumped every night and freshened every morning. I keep the baking soda and the borax under my sink, and then that way, if I need to scour anything, like tile or whatever, I can just sprinkle it right on. Or in the sink, I can just take it out and sprinkle on a scoop. Every few days, I clean out the sink, just add a little dish soap, running water, sprinkle some baking soda, and then I add some vinegar. I'll scrub the top, I'll scrub the bottom, being careful to use an appropriate soft cloth, nothing that will leave scratches. I let it soak sometimes for up to a half an hour, and then come back and finish it off, wiping it down nice. Remembering to take deep breaths, and unclench your shoulders, and just release any tension as you're working. Just taking in the nice clean sink, the feel of the water, really being present in the moment to what you're doing. Having a nice clean home, a nice clean sink, it just helps us to feel good. It helps our mind, it helps our body and our senses to just feel good. So like I said, I'll just probably leave this to soak after scrubbing it out and come back and finish it off at a later time. 
It's just a nice relaxing activity that you can do. Really getting all of your senses going. You can hear the water, feel the temperature. Just use gentle scrubbing motions right here, right now, in the present moment. And now let's move down the hallway and check on our laundry. So I use baking soda, borax, essential oils, and hydrogen peroxide, as well as vinegar in the laundry room. Doing a load of colors, I'll just add the clothes to the washing machine. Add the soap, I do use a liquid detergent, something free and clear. Um, my health food store has a good one, as well as I like seventh generation. Okay, once everything's in, I will get out my soap as well as my vinegar. I often add vinegar in the spot where it says bleach. So it just freshens it and it also helps to keep it really nice and fresh. So I'll add the soap to my soap dispenser. Again, an organic free and clear, something of a good brand. And then vinegar to where the bleach compartment is. It brightens, it deodorizes. And then I add essential oils. I like lemon essential oil. I just add a few drops in with the vinegar and that just gives it a nice fresh scent. Then I am ready to go. Transferring over the laundry, hanging up the shirt for my husband so it doesn't get wrinkled. And I like to go ahead and add essential oil drops to my dryer balls. And this is in place of any fabric softener. I find it works really well environmentally friendly and it just freshens the load. Every time I do a load of laundry and I see something white, whether it's a shirt or a towel, I put it in one of these bins during the week and at the end of the week I have a white load to do. So for my whites, I like to do a couple of things. I alternate between a few things. Right now I'm putting in some baking soda right in the drum. I will alternate between using baking soda and borax and I just put a scoop right into the drum. That really freshens and whitens the load. In the washing compartments, I put my soap, my laundry detergent, and then I alternate between using hydrogen peroxide and vinegar in the spot where the bleach is supposed to go. Vinegar really whitens a load, but if you really want to get close to bleach, try using hydrogen peroxide. Um, remember, you can't mix vinegar and hydrogen peroxide in the same load. And that's it. Now while I'm here, I'll just feed my cute little doggies and get ready to take them on a beautiful walk outside. I guess it's still winter coat temperature, but not for that much longer. Always make sure that you stop to smell the fresh, beautiful air, listen to the birds chirp and get outside. It does the body so good. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.